con la campaña de verano en pleno apogeo. Los aspirantes presidenciales republicanos están recorriendo el voto anticipado. Former President Donald Trump back in Iowa today. Uh, make America great again. That's a very simple, uh, very simple statement. With a commanding lead in the polls for the Republican presidential nomination. But for some GOP voters who like Trump's message, there are still questions about his style. The person I want is so divisive that it's just like, you know, <laughs> can't you please just get along with people? Others are ready to move on entirely. Trump's really powerful. You can't, you can't dismiss him or undersell him in any way, but we've already seen that. In Iowa this week, a few hundred people looking for an alternative to Trump packed into this evangelical church auditorium to see his major rival. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis made his first early state appearance as an official candidate in challenging what can be taught in schools. In Florida, we proved that all of this can be done. We chose facts over fear. We chose education over indoctrination. We chose law and order over rioting and disorder. Trump has grown increasingly critical of the governor in recent weeks, calling him Ron Disaster and Ron DeSanctimonious. If it takes eight years to turn this around, then uh, you don't want him. DeSantis delivered his most forceful pushback yet. He used to say how great Florida was. Hell, his whole family moved to Florida under my governorship. Are you kidding me? Some voters believe DeSantis offers greater potential to reach beyond the GOP base. I think we need a candidate who won't be divisive, uh, can actually get independents to also vote for him. With half a dozen candidates already in the race, other contenders are hoping to catch fire with voters in the critical early nominating states. Whether it's former Governor Nikki Haley answering questions about abortion in the Granite State. You know, I'm being very honest with you. I can't suddenly change my pro-life position because I'm campaigning in New Hampshire. Or Senator Tim Scott sharing his life story. When I look back and I look forward in our nation, I understand the misery uniquely that comes with broken pieces and a broken family and a broken heart. Putting those together for our nation is my responsibility. A strong performance in Iowa, New Hampshire, or South Carolina could propel underdog campaigns into competitive spots. We absolutely have to win because I think our country is done if we have to do another four years on the current path. And I'm going to be paying very close attention to see who can win. The candidates will soon have more competition. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum, and former Vice President Mike Pence are all expected to launch campaigns for the Republican nomination next week. For an on-the-ground look at the candidates and voters in early states, I'm joined by Kay Henderson, the news director for Radio Iowa and moderator of Iowa Press on Iowa PBS, and Gavin Jackson, a reporter for PBS station South Carolina ETV and host of This Week in South Carolina. Welcome to you both. Okay, let's begin in Iowa. The caucus is, of course, still first in the nation for the Republicans. Obviously, the candidates showing up there early and often. How is that resonating with voters on the ground? What do they tell you they're looking for? Well, it depends on the person you ask. One of the people at a Trump event today said to me, it appears to him that the nomination is Trump's to lose. When you go to DeSantis events, they're looking for something different. They're looking for something new. In fact, one of the people that I interviewed on Monday told me that he's looking for someone who's not geriatric. There's a fear among some DeSantis people that putting a rematch of Trump versus Biden would not turn out well for the party. But Iowans are not by any means making up their minds as a group right now. They're sampling other candidates, Nikki Haley, Tim Scott, the South Carolinians. Uh, there was a small group that met with uh, Vice President Mike Pence. 
earlier in May. And of course, he will be coming to Iowa next week to announce he's jumping in the race. One of the dynamics here is that the more people that enter this race, the likelier that Donald Trump will be able to prevail in the Iowa caucuses uh, because just because of the sheer number of people in the race. Gavin, what about in South Carolina? What are you hearing from voters there? Yeah, similar to what Kay was talking about there. I mean, I just go off of a swing from Tim Scott's campaign launch. You know, he launched on May 22nd in North Charleston. Uh, it was a very similar launch to what we saw with Nikki Haley making her bid in February. And I followed both of those candidates to the battleground states in Iowa and New Hampshire after their launches in South Carolina. And it, a lot of folks are saying the same things in those early voting states as they're saying here in South Carolina. They're waiting to see this field gel. They're trying to see who uh, has the strongest message since so many people have similar messages too and that's not too dissimilar from what we're hearing from Tim Scott and Nikki Haley talking about their backgrounds introducing themselves to voters out there in Iowa and New Hampshire as we await to hear from more candidates on the ground here in South Carolina obviously Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is stopping in South Carolina on Friday as part of his 12 city swing uh, a huge kind of campaign launch that we've seen from Ron DeSantis that we didn't see from Tim Scott the other day uh, you know, he had a big kickoff in North Charleston, but then he went to Iowa, had one town hall, uh, handled it pretty well, had about 200, 300 people there, had a round table with some educators as well, and then went to New Hampshire and had a small meet and greet with some uh, New Hampshire Republican women. So a bit different from what we're seeing from Ron DeSantis and from what we saw with Nikki Haley. She had multiple town hall events too. So it seems like Tim Scott's really trying to get into campaign mode right now from that listening tour mode. But Gavin, when you talk to these folks in the early voting states though, are there particular issues that they're really paying attention to? We heard Nikki Haley talking about abortion access. Ron DeSantis has been leaning into this anti-woke message, right? We heard all the candidates bashing the debt ceiling deal here in D.C. Does any of that matter Yeah, you know, to you, you hear a lot about on the stump about, you know, anti-woke, fighting against this, you know, this victimhood stuff that we're talking about. And it gets a lot of applause lines out there. But actually, day-to-day -day voters, you know, that's not the first thing that they bring up when I ask them, what are your top issues? It's the economy. It's education. It's making sure that the country can move forward. And so maybe that does have to do with that, uh, you know, anti-wokeness, worrying about political correctness and trying to move the country forward as they see has been kind of stagnant under President Joe Biden. So folks are waiting to hear from more of these candidates. And I mean, we're seeing them turn out too. You know, Nikki Haley has a crowd of about a thousand people uh, in South Carolina, which was in Myrtle Beach earlier this year. She had about 500 people in Greer. Uh, I've seen Ron DeSantis when he was making his tour through the state earlier before he declared, and he had about a thousand people at a church up in Spartanburg on a Wednesday night. So the momentum's there. People are interested to hear what these folks have to say. No one's really making up their mind yet, which is tough for Tim Scott and Nikki Haley since they're the homegrown candidates here. They want to win their home state, and right now it's up for grabs. Únete a la comunidad de noticias republicanas sin censura y mantente informado con la verdad detrás de las noticias en Estados Unidos. Te esperamos.